Now let's have our next speaker. The next speaker is also keynote speaker of session one, Rafik Anado. Rafik is a media artist, director, and pioneer in the ethics of data and machine intelligence. Please join me in welcome, Rafik. Hello. Hello, Hello can you hear me? Yes, wow. perfectly. The video is interesting. I think it's blocking the way. <laughs> great, to, great to see you. Hello, everyone from Los Angeles, California. Uh, excited to be here. Thank you for inviting. I'm, I'm really excited to share my journey with the wonderful um, people here sharing. And as we see from Filippo, such a deep and, um, deep and meaningful context of AI and art. Thank you very much for the inspiring talk. I thanks, like for share... being, thanks for being here. Oh, we, please. Tried, we tried during the past edition. We didn't succeed. I'm very glad to have you here because I really admire your works. De 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 deeply honored, deeply honored. Uh, so I would yes. like to share my journey in maybe half an hour with you uh, in my session. Um, yes. and I'd like to share my screen with the optimized okay. video. Okay, so I'll do my best to quickly go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hello everyone again. Uh, I'm a media artist and director uh, currently joining from Los Angeles, California. Uh, I've been also teaching at University of California, Los Angeles, last almost eight years, where I got my second Master of Fine Arts degree, uh, and, and I was very honored and, and very fortunate to work with one of the um, most inspiring pioneer media artists, such as Casey Rias, Christian Moller, Jennifer Steinkamp, and during the architecture part, Greg Glynn, uh, Frank Gehry, and Tom Main was also during my time, was at the, uh, UCLA. I originated from Istanbul, Turkey, where I started my journey. And this is a beautiful city where the West and East connects, where the Silk Road connects, where the culture travels through the centuries-long information. I found this very inspiring because it's like kind of a West and right, left and uh, West and contemporary, West and East, left and right, contemporary and modern. And history is kind of like emerge in the center of the city. But things were not designed, of course, because when you have entire culture coming together, you have every kind of potential to fill the entire empty spaces. But also, it was very inspiring. To, I was eight years old when I got my very first computer. And thanks to my mother's, I guess, birthday gift. And this Commodore 128, a machine that I think completely changed my mind because I was completely inspired by the idea of a space in the mind of a machine. And I feel like I was, by the way, addicted to games till, in the, <laughs> till high school. And I was super inspired also the same year I watched this incredible movie that transformed my imagination, Blade Runner. It may be a little bit like a very sometimes cheesy for some people, but for an artist, for a person imagining the future, to me, this was a very powerful moment of like learning the idea of a near future experiences. But also, I'm extremely enjoyed the idea of like remembering the future. And I guess 2008, a very important date, I would like to call, where I met an amazing lecture from Lev Manovic. And 2008, during this Media Facade exhibition, and in his words, when he was talking about this amazing uh, lecture about politics of augment space, he was saying, in other words, architects along with artists can take the next logical step to consider the invisible space of electronic data flows as substance rather than just as void, something that needs a structure, a politics, and a poetics. So this was a very powerful quote to me, and I think today I will be showing my journey with data and AI. time in the class there was a computer science student there was a music student and me from the design student like the three of us took the class and it was the very first time i think i coined the term data painting and in this class i achieved to get a beautiful simple signal studies of a sensor and transform them into a completely enjoying black and white beautiful material but 2008 also very important in my in my journey. It was the very first time I was able to create an audiovisual performance on a on a, a contemporary art center in Istanbul, where the journey started to appear much meaningfully. Follow it with the sana. in a public space using three days of information from the street, such as the sound data, and transform it into this three-dimensional data sculpture. And I guess the poetics of data 
which I'm calling it as a mean of like research, started to appear. And very first code I was super inspired by also Ken Perlin's noise algorithm. But instead of like just using it as it is, I was very much inspired by plotting other type of data sets as an input, as a mean of like memory. And also very inspired by the idea of reality and how we can re-render and question it. I guess you will find this frame around my work since 2011. I'm sorry, this, this this frame is a kind of a rejection, unfortunately. We couldn't put on a building because it was too expensive, I guess. <laughs> but this idea of like a frame around the data and algorithm will be very uh, prophetic. And also, I'm much more inspired over the years about data, but also how as humans we are transforming into these new populations, how we are becoming these internet citizens and how many people exactly using these machines in a world that pretty much impossible to run away. And I think the idea of using physical and virtual worlds together appeared in my mind very clearly after this in this moment. And it and also was very much inspired by the idea of how the technology is transforming who we are. In Kevin Kelly's amazing What Technology Wants book, he says, scientists has come to a startling realization. However you define life, it is a sense, does not reside in materials forms like DNA, tissue, or flesh, but in the intangible organization of energy and information contained in those material forms. And as technology was unveiled from it is short of atoms, we could see that its core is about ideas and information. Both life and technology seems to be based on material flows of information. I think this flows of information every single day around us and how the machine surrounds us and how the feeling of sense of displacement becoming our new DNA and gene part. And as John Mayer says, design is a solution to a problem, art is a question to a problem. I found my question as a little bit maybe very fundamental, but what does it really mean to be a human in 21st century? And I think this question cannot be answered myself, and I would like to recognize my heroes, my also my team members. So we are now 15 people, can speak 15 languages, and represent 10 countries in our studio. And over the years, what I think we achieved is we were simply very much focused on embedding media arts into architecture and try to create novel experiences in public spaces and try to find meaningful artistic experiences, transforming the immaterial data into this something we can in, that becomes this tangible feelings. And I do believe that architecture is beyond just concrete, steel and glass. And this journey of data as a space, data as a substance, or machine as a collaborator became much more prof profound in our research. And last eight years, we profoundly look at for many incredible collaborations, universities, professors, incredible researchers, academicians, scientists. And I guess very much interestingly, my first collectors and people commissioned the work was Silicon Valley. I guess before the art world, <clears throat> I'm sorry, before the art world, I was able to work with one of the most amazing people in Silicon Valley here in Los Angeles, Los Angeles and transform many incredible ideas and research into an art experiences. But I think today, because the AI is a very fundamental um, question for this amazing event, and I would like to go back to DeepMind and the and Deep basically dream, where this incredible image probably seen by many people. This, the Deep Dream was a software and originated in a deep convolutional network called named Inception, after the film of the same name was developed for the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenge in 2014, and I think realized in July 2015. And that was an incredible summer to me. And I emailed these incredible people behind it. Like I was just questioning as an artist, like how can I like look at this same like you know code and understand how we can use it. And I think I'm very confident to say that that was a very important moment for the art history. And I think the same group of people, thanks to Google Friends, opened an amazing event in San Francisco an event called Deep Dream. And Deep Dream was the first event in Gray Area in San Francisco, 2016, February. And that was the event very first time Google engineers were coming together with, with me as an artist, I guess. The rest was an incredible group of people, but mostly <clears throat> amazing engineers at Google. I was the only one at the event doesn't know how to use AI. But that was an incredible time to me. Also start the very first artist in residence at Google using AI in a fundamental way. So I'm very grateful for here, Blaise Agora Arcas, Kenrick McDowell, and Mike Taika, who allowed me to start this journey.
What was very important to me was not only just use AI, the techno fetish tool, but the idea of using the library of the future, the idea of using library of Babel, pretty much Borges, Borges' incredible imagination of every single existential data in one location. I was very much inspired by and created archive dreaming. And archive dreaming was a one form of an immersive environment where you can interact with AI real time. 2016, we developed this incredibly challenging installation. So the idea was taking 1.7 million documents, an incredibly rich archive, open source, free for everyone, and put this imagination of like machine latent space into the game. To me, what was very inspiring is the idea of like finding latent space as a canvas and finding this meaning inside this black box. And also, what was also remarkably important is in a library where information turns into a knowledge, eventually into an experience in life and a wisdom, the left side we are seeing is how the archivists were like using data, and on the right side, how the AI was creating the um, clusters of information. And it was that time I started these data universes in my work. Archive Dreaming, as you may see, is the very first immersive environment and architectural installation where the very first time AI put in a, like a library in a three-dimensional environment and immersively transform you from this real-time world to also VR world where a human learns like the speed of machine but beyond using a classical just bunch of um, let's say search bars here the idea is look at what AI found from it <coughs> and the project got an incredible research reaction and also in Ar in Ars Electronica 2017 was also uh, witnessed by an incredible audience and I think it became a very important research for our studio. And actually what was very important to me was also the idea of machine hallucinations. If a machine can learn, can a dream question became incredibly important. And it was a very fortunate moment that Ian Goodfellow, who are who is the founder of J and again algorithms generative astral network, Mike Tech and, and we as a studio were able to explore this 1.7 million documents on the left side, as you see, and generate again results from the DC and algorithm and create this latent walk. But to me, that was not just the art itself. To me, the art was profoundly finding a connection with the pigmentation. On the very right side, what you are seeing, a fluid dynamics, completely traced by these de admission decisions and transform them into these artworks, at which I am also, I guess, coined the term AI data painting and AI data sculptures. And here, as we see, AI translate the data and turns into the pigmentation. And this research is still going on, and I'm extremely excited to show uh, many examples. And over the last six years, we were able to train more than 100 AI models from StyleGAN, the StyleGAN 2ADA, DG, DCGAN, PGGAN, recently a lot of like multimodal AI research. And thanks to NVIDIA friends and Jensen Huang, which is an, an incredible support. Uh, we have many DJX stations and a lot of GPUs that are allowing us research. But the fundamental idea of like, Every single research we did, we try to like never show in our any projects a real data, only look for what machine could hallucinate and create from that potential memory, which in this case, collective memory, urban, nature, space, and in different topics. And this became a body of work for the last six years. And we are profoundly researching this field and, and incredible support comes from the also AI research field. And I think this aesthetics of fluid dynamics with AI findings became a body of work. Uh, but of course, as you see here, every single different model, every single different color, every different uh, movement in life in these AI dreams can reconstruct these very much unique findings. And for me, like especially early days, early years, I was just thinking like, is it like a similar idea? Are we doing the same thing feeling? But actually, the more we train AI models, the more we found the uniqueness and differences between different memories of humanity. And this idea, not only just easy, of course, creating an, an, an fluid dynamics or simulations, we also developed novel architecture and novel architectures in like software, such as in this case, latent space browser. So what you are seeing and me, I'm literally physically using a joystick in a 3D physical space. And this software trained on an every single Renaissance era architecture, which can speculate the interior, exterior and facade. And me on the left side, finding those moments and clicking a button 
and selecting a moment and connecting these independent locations and let the machine hallucinate alternatives. And I'm calling this also a space in the mind of a machine or putting a camera in the mind of a machine. This idea became very powerfully um, our body of work, I guess, and have been explored in SIGGRAPH and in Media GTC. And we became, I guess, the pioneers of this um, movement in terms of the uh, AI art in this context. But to me, the other question, of course, can we reconstruct the memory? Is it possible to like look at the patterns of remembering? Neuroscience was always very fundamental. And embedding AI into architecture, as, as I mentioned before, is always the fundamental research. 2018, right after archive dreaming, we get a wonderful commission from Artec House, and this time we train our AI on 113, 113 million, 113 million New York photos. These photos have been completely focused on the city of New York, and we transform it into this three-dimensional immersive environment by using 18-channel projection and 32-channel sound, and this became one of the most exciting examples of stepping inside this hallucinatory space, hallucinatory space where the machine could dream and imagine a world that we can step in, we can be a part of it. And I do believe before wearing a television on our face, we do still have a lot of room that architecture can become this canvas, as later, these new augmented spaces, as Lev Manevich mentioned, I think we have a lot of room here. The project 2018 to 19 became a pioneer piece in the immersive environment, transformed this feeling into an ever-changing work and traveled to many cities in the world. Also in Krautwerk in Berlin, we tried another version of this idea. This time we transformed the iconic Krautwerk into a canvas and also explore real-time AI data sculptures and different level of augmentations. And I will say public art and expression NFTs became also very important for our research. Not only just NFT, to me, is anything exciting. To me, when it becomes a public art and experience in life becomes much more profound and important. In our research, we were also very fundamentally um, inspired by NASA GPL, like any science fiction lover, I guess, inspired from the um, space itself and the research itself, and we were able to create many AI models from the ISS, Hubble, MRO, and even created many different data sculptures uh, between 2016 to, to, to right now. And our data sculptures have been explored in different scales and, and, and being enjoyed by also in Hong Kong, as far as I know, one of the most visited exhibitions last year, um, which is called Machine Hallucination Space, was also auctioned as an NFT, the room itself physically became an NFT. The very first immersive room, I guess, became an NFT. And the piece was also exploring an, a software as a space. Software, as Usman Haq mentioned many times, software became the space. The experience becomes the space. And then later on, not only just inspired by the idea of machines, only two senses, but also the third sense, maybe multi-sensory world, opened up to us 2019. Bulgari commissioned this project called Metamorphosis. And the idea was here, what will happen if AI not only just create this audio and visual space, but can also have a scent augmentation. So thanks to Fermanich, an incredible company in Lausanne and Geneva, we were able to create the scent of AI dreams. When you step in, in this immersive room, which is a two-dimensional, two and two, um, two different uh, LED media walls and an immersive room, the room was also creating a real-time scent based on the color, the form of flower, and real-time scent augmentation was happening behind the walls. And again, this is one of the first example of AI multi-sensory environment profoundly using a real-time data and real-time world augmentation without wearing any VR or AR. And I guess in this case, it's more like an XR.
And as Flip K. Dick says, I guess, reality is that which doesn't go away when you stop living in it. A simulation is that which doesn't stop when the stories go away. Stories are responsible to our human desire for resolution, but a simulation is responsible only to its own laws and initializing conditions. A simulation has no moral prejudice or meaning like nature, it just is. And I guess another project I would like to recognize last year, I'm deeply thankful to Museum of Modern Arts in New York, Paola Antonelli, Michelle Kuo, John Posma, and Casey Rias, Feral File, we were able to create one of the world's very first museum collaboration in the NFT space. The project called Unsupervised research on the entire MoMA collection, more than incredible 250,000 images of MoMA, transformed into a series of artworks by using also NVIDIA collaboration, thanks to the StyleGAN team and an incredible team at Helsinki, we were able to create this beautiful series of collection of using entire MoMA archive. The piece also explored beautiful archive of MoMA from multiple senses and recognized the data sets inside this incredible world. And we generate multiple works. For example, data universe of MoMA represents entire MoMA archive by using UMAP algorithm and plotted in six dimensions. And there was only 5,000 editions, which were very accessible for everyone. And they also later become a ticket for MoMA for museum. Very first time, NFT utility was becoming a ticket. And also we train a beautiful new StyleGAN algorithm, StyleGAN 2 ADA algorithm with the entire archive. And look at this, one of the most rarest art, um, art collection in the world. And thanks to the curators and incredible dialogues during the production, we were able to create these three series of unique artworks. The very left one, Machine Hallucinations MoMA, is completely using a real-time software, infinitely dreaming about the modern art that exists in the MoMA archive. The middle one, which is Fluid Dreams, is a studio signature, I guess, journey with Fluid Dynamics that exists more than six years of research with AI and data. And on the very right side, Generative Study 1 is a real-time also application that reconstructs using a real-time GAN algorithm, curated walk into a series of an algorithm. And I guess this is a very important project for today, the name of the event, which is a quantum memories. I do believe it is one of the early examples of using quantum data and a quantum collaboration. I'm extremely, extremely honored to share this project with Google AI quantum team, thanks to Hartman Newman, an incredible team at Google AI quantum. We were able to create this project what you are seeing is uh, basically one of the most exciting research, I guess, happened in 2019, quantum advantage research. And this data set that exists from their research became an inspiration. Heavily inspired by the Hugh Everett's many worlds interpretation, quantum memories trained on a 200 million um, nature photos. And this nature series of GAN algorithms triggered by a new novel way of triggering with quantum subatomic calculations from the AI team and transform that with strings into a four-dimensional noise algorithm that drive new worlds that are transformed into this data sculpture, AI data sculpture. The piece was in National Gallery of Victoria and during the pandemic, unfortunately, I couldn't see it, but I learned that more than 1.4 million people enjoyed the National Gallery of Victoria during pandemic. It's a deep honor for us, for our studio, during pandemic, achieve such a major audience and find the healing aspect of art, a museum as a space where AI, quantum research, and data experience can heal the people and bring positivity in dark days of humanity. Another piece I guess we should also maybe have a look is Last Miami, Art Basel, Basel Miami. We also were able to create an NFT project called Machine Hallucinations Coral Dreams. Coral Dreams explored literally 
a beautiful world of underwater universe, which I think is one of the most exciting data we ever collected from the underwater universe. And we trained this AI and transformed Miami Beach into a public art. Later on also became an NFT auction, a collection. The piece explored an incredible excitement about putting the activating the beautiful nature as a canvas. So the public art is an incredibly inspiring research for our studio. And I think we, the reason we got many positive um, interviews and very positive reviews about activating public space, open, free, and accessible for everyone, and creating these novel connections, I think became our studio's fundamental work. Another project I would like to um, share with you today is Machine Extensions Nature Dreams, a project exhibited in Berlin last November and attracted in five weeks more than 200,000 people. It may be the largest audience ever visited a gallery in Europe. And the beautiful St. Agnes, a former brutalist architecture church, which thanks to Johann Koenig and his incredible vision, transformed into a gallery space. In our project, we took the iconic tower <clears throat> and transformed it into an AI data sculpture. And the sculpture was using real-time data from Berlin datasets and transforming this beautiful canvas into an ever-changing live piece of sculpture in public space. Inside the building, we installed a Nature Dreams. This time, in between NGV, we were able to create a 300 million image archive for nature, landscapes, flowers, beautiful ocean, lakes, animals, and incredibly exciting trees became a part of nature dreams. And I guess what was very powerful in, in, in my experience in this beautiful space was maybe the church context, maybe the spiritual space, but it was very inspiring to see one kilometer queue in the beautiful, you know, in, in, in the morning of like Berlin on Sunday and at 10 a.m. early morning and seeing such an incredible audience and getting a beautiful reaction from any age and honestly any background from the Berlin audience was incredibly powerful for our studio. And I guess this whole idea of like creating public space over the years and connecting with many people as an audience became our very powerful reason why we should bring AI. By the way, in our all exhibitions, we always show behind the scenes. We always show what we do and how we do with these algorithms. While this created a copycat, <laughs> a couple of copycats are doing the same thing without any reference. But at the meantime, we remain very this pause for our public art experiences in the world. And I guess a couple of two projects I would like to, uh, before I finish my, my talk, I would like to remind this incredibly honored, deeply honored project called Living Architecture Casabatio. Actually, two weeks ago in Barcelona, we hosted 47,000 people in this beautiful building by Anthony Gaudi's 
Casabatio. As God dimensions, originality consists in the returning to the origin, does that which is original returns to the simplicity of the first solutions. An incredibly inspiring quote that we thought that what will happen if we take this beautiful facade, and thanks to Casabatio family, by the way, an incredibly open-minded person and people, we transform the facade into a living architecture, a, a real-time data augmentation. <laughs> This was, first of all, used an incredibly inspiring data from the UNESCO Heritage Quality LiDAR scanning of the facade, which was a 100 billion data point. And also by using a real-time weather station and using an Unreal Engine and real-time game motor, we were able to take the data from the building and transform the weather conditions into a living artwork. And living architecture also started almost, I guess, three years ago with an incredible letter came from Hashim Sarkis and Venice Biennale architecture creator and he, he wrote this incredible mail in an incredible letter where he was mentioning that maybe the future of our, my practice can be taking this lead to a new, new journeys of living beings and I was inspired and I was super lucky to get this um, attention and during the Venice Biennale we explored a similar idea but it was the very first time I was able to reconstruct this world and it was also became an amazing installation in Barcelona, we took this information <clears throat> and transformed the beautiful facade into a canvas. Lastly, I would like to show our latest honored project with Zahadit Architecture. Incredibly, incredibly honored. And thanks to Patrick Schumacher for this wonderful collaboration, the entire Zahadit Architects. We were able to work in one of the most, to me, from my heart, meaningful data of entire Zaha archives. And for this project, we closed the work with Zaha Code team and the exhibition opened in Seoul at DDP and also an immersive environment designed by Zaha. So this is one of our most, most amazingly inspired project. So for the project, we first explore an incredible archive of um, Zaha Hadith archives, and then look at this incredible documentation of the uh, legacy of the, of, the, of the design firm. And then we train and style again to ADA algorithm, and then look at this beautiful information with image clusters.
And then later on, more of the probably many of us is aware of the multi-model AI that exists, such as you know, Clip Diffusion and OpenAI's incredible DALI and before maybe GPT-3 and so on. So we're very honored to be one of the first exam uh, first uh, group of people who were allowed to use DALI 2. I think we were made like very first five, I guess, researchers. And what we look at DALI 2 as a mean of um, tool for architecting the metaverse. And again, thanks to Patrick Schumacher, we spend a lot of time together and look at this incredibly exciting diffusion models and then look at like how this new ways of seeing design tool and transforming these incredible um, forms into a three-dimensional environments. And I think what is what is pioneering here is the Hadid architects also take these prompts, these visuals, and then transform them into a three-dimensional spaces where we can now go and visit. And this is an incredible honor for our studio. And I would like to finish my talk with the teaser of Architecting the Metaverse, a collaboration with our studio and the Hadid Architects. <laughs> Thank you very much and and see you all in data land hope i didn't get too long thank you very much thank you rafik very inspiring presentation and also this session is followed by a 30 minute panel talk around after the our next two speakers so see you there <laughs>